So today we are going to be making a traditional candied papaya. Uh, it's very traditional in the islands, uh, especially Puerto Rico and Cuba and the Dominican Republic, but everyone has their own way of making it. This is the way we make it in my family. So you're going to need a green papaya. You can get a green papaya at any Latino grocery store or you can get it at an Asian market. I am very fortunate that I live in Florida and I grow this. So right now I have like 60 papayas on my five trees that I have. <laughs> so when they're in season, I usually make the candy papaya and then you keep it in mason jars and it'll it'll last a good year in your refrigerator so um what you're going to need is a potato peeler or a veggie peeler if you don't have one back in the old days my grandparents would take the knife and just scrape it because you want to try to keep that top flush okay so I'm going to go ahead and peel this. So like I said, you're going to need one that's about two and a half pounds for this particular recipe. So let me go ahead and peel this and I'll be back. So here we are. I went ahead and I peeled. I'm making two. I'm making five pounds, but the recipe I'm going to show you is for two and a half pounds. I'm doubling the recipe for myself. I know many of you probably don't, don't want to make that much, but if you do, just double the recipe. Um... I'm going to make five pounds, but the recipe I'm going to show you is for two and a half pounds. So once you peel your papaya, see how white it is, cut the top off and open it in the middle. It's going to have a bunch of little white seeds. If it's a little pink on the inside, that's fine. I know these are ripe. I mean, these aren't ripe. See, these are really white. <laughs> that's what you want. But if it's a little pink, sometimes you have like a little pink flesh. That's perfectly fine. You just want it to be firm though. So I'm going to go ahead with a spoon. Scrape the entire membrane on the inside out and all these seeds. And I'll be back to show you the next step. So here we are. My papayas are nice and clean. Went ahead and I rinsed them. As you can see, all the entire membrane is taken out. You don't want any bumps or ridges in there. You want it nice and clean. And at this point, you're going to cut them about three-eighths of an inch to a half inch. This way. Okay. This is... And you have two options. You can either keep it this big. Okay. Or you can cut them in half. I like cutting them in half because I'm going to put them in mason jars. And these do shrink up a little bit when you cook them and they get a little more tender. But uh, I like cutting them in half. But that's a personal choice from that per point on. So, All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut all the papaya and I'll be back. So here we are, They're all chopped up. So at this point, I'm going to add two tablespoons of baking soda. I have two bowls because I'm making two. You see, here's the other bowl. So sorry if I'm being a little delayed here. And then I have here filtered water. And you want to cover this, cover the papaya all in that. Give it a good stir to make sure the baking soda gets into every nook and cranny. And what the baking soda does, it's make, it firms it up. It gives it a real nice tough skin on the outside so when it cooks it won't fall apart. If you don't want to do the baking soda, if you live like in a, where you have a lot of sunlight, um, the old folks, what they used to do was put it out in the sun all day for at least six to seven hours. They would cut it up and just lay it on paper, on paper bags, and just lay it outside in the sun for six to eight hours. And then they would make this. But this way I think it's just easier. I mean, I do live in Florida, I can do that. But um, anyway, let it sit in here for about a half hour and then we'll start making our candy, okay? So here we're back, a half hour has passed. I have here one cup of brown sugar. Okay. 
you're gonna need star anise. You're gonna put two. Canela entera, that's cinnamon, cinnamon sticks. Not cinnamon powder, you cannot use powder for this. You're gonna need two. What I do is I break them in half. And you're gonna need clavo entero, which is whole cloves. Again, you need the actual cloves, you cannot use powder. You're gonna need, for your recipe, you're gonna need 10, so two, four. And that's organic brown sugar. Make sure your sugar is organic or vegan certified. Here, and you're gonna need um, two cups of regular sugar, vegan sugar. So that's one cup, these are half cups. I know it seems like a lot of sugar, guys. Stir everything up. Turn your heat up to a medium. Mix everything up really nice. Put about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Always put salt in your... Now, this is at about a five on my stove. I have an electric stove. So you want it at a medium, medium high. You want to rinse your papaya really well. No water. We're not adding any water to this. Mix it to coat your sugar. It seems like a lot, but this will this will become nothing. So now for a half hour. You want to cover this, like I said, I have my stove at about a five, which is about a medium to a little bit above medium high. I'm going to leave this covered for a half hour. Put your timer on for a half hour. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and cook it like on a seven to a nine, which is like a above a medium high, like a high for about 15 minutes till it becomes like a syrup. So I'll be back. So here we are, 30 minutes have passed. So, see all the liquid? Remember, we didn't add any water to this. Look at all the liquid that's in the bottom of this bowl, of this pot. And we're gonna increase the heat. About two notches, so I'm gonna have it on seven. And at this point, guys, you're gonna have to sit here for at least 15 minutes keeping an eye on this because it will stick to the bottom of the pot and it will burn. Every five minutes, every three to four minutes, mix it up and mix it up. So I thought I'd show you. See how it's thickened up? Look at the color of the papaya. Um, I don't like to let it ev a, lot, a lot of the sugar evaporate quite a lot because it's, um, this will thicken when it gets cold. So I like having a little sauce for my, put in the jars and stuff. And you see the papaya, how nice, it's gotten somewhat translucent. You see, it's, but it's still, it's still integrated. It's not falling apart or crumbling. You don't want the papaya to crumble. So if you don't like a lot of liquid, I honestly, cook it longer. Just crank up the heat as high as you want. And just keep stirring it until you get the consistency of the sauce that you want. So for me, that's good enough. Because I, I like having, like I said, I like having a little bit of the syrup in my containers. So I'm going to turn it off at this point. All right. Mmm. Oh, my God. When you see this at a Puerto Rican or a Caribbean household, you know Christmas is around the corner. This is always made for the holidays. It's a must have on the holiday table. We eat it with, we eat it with um, galletas de manteca, but we don't, we're vegan, so we don't eat that. It's made out of lard, crackers made out of lard. It's gross anyway. Um, and we eat it with farmer's cheese, queso caribe. 
but um i found that if you get the i think daya makes it the gouda cheese it tastes just the same as the queso de bola from puerto rico so i hope you guys try this out another holiday little treat and this is what i do i put it in mason jars let it cool off and i put it in the refrigerator and it's um I eat it with uh, Robita crackers, which are like saltine crackers, but they're from Puerto Rico. They're the only ones that don't have animal fat in it. It's called Robita. It's a blue can. You can get them at the Puerto Rican market. Or any saltine cracker that doesn't have, that's made out of vegetable oil. Anyway, as always, thanks for tuning in. I don't want to keep lingering here. Um, peace. De mi casa a tu casa. Veja everyone. Take care.